Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to part four of Sonic 4 Episode 1. Mad Gear Zone, find... not Metal Gear Zone. You know, I re if I if I had the skills to edit it, I would have just paste pasted like a teeth uh, like a piece of duct tape over that and just wrote metal on it. <laughs> oh, and then right before the boss of the zone, it's like a weapon to surpass Metal Gear. <laughs> now, doesn't Sonic get hurt by steam in another level of another game somewhere? Uh, I think it was one of the Sonic Advance games, actually. Like, so why is Steam suddenly okay? Like, because at this point they ported it to Steam. <laughs> did they? Oh, uh, actually, they did. yes. Uh, actually, yes. Yeah, Sonic Four, uh, Sonic Four, and Episode One and Two are on uh, Steam. Oh, they are now. Okay, that's yeah. cool. They, they, they weren't before, but they are now. That's cool. And I have absolutely no idea what hit me there. Like that spike just came out of nowhere. I think it was an arrow from one of the other enemies. I'm not, I'm not sure. Yeah, but it, it traveled a long way just to get to me. And you know, normally in Sonic 2, these enemies would be a gigantic pain, but because you got the homing attack, there's really no threat to them. Yeah. And also, they're not nearly as aggressive. Well, the slicers are still a pain in the ass, but, you know... Well, that know? always bugged me about old Sonic, like the old Genesis Sonic uh, enemies in the first place. Is It always felt to me like they always attacked way too early into their active frames on screen. Yeah. Like, and, and it was always my one of my bigger problems with Sonic, was that they would, like... As soon as the enemy comes on screen, they start their attack animation. It, like, at least in Mario, they always had a wait animation before. Besides Hammer Bros, even no, even Hammer Bros, they would have a wait animation because yeah, no, because usually it's, it's when you get to the back then in Mario, right? It's, they don't really have attack animations. It's just, well, most enemies don't. It's it's well, yeah. Like you just run into them. Yeah. But I think it's more of an issue in a game like Sonic because it's about about speed. It's about going yeah, fast. Yeah, like, if you're yeah. supposed to go fast, then don't make the enemies like hit you and possibly kill you for going fast. And it, it's always been mixed signals with Sonic, and that's always been my biggest problem with the whole series. Like, doesn't matter what and, game it is. And honestly, I think like I have to give props to Freedom Planet for doing this. Is that they eliminated touch damage. You can only be hurt by enemies when they're actually attacking. Yeah, you. yeah. I, that I did like. Oh. <laughs> yeah, and unfortunately, no. Super Sonic does not protect you from crushing. <laughs> You can still get flattened, so be wary of that. But yeah, Freedom you know, Planet did a good job with that, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. yeah, Freedom Planet, the best Sonic game since Sonic 3. The best Sonic games to have come out recently, minus Sonic Generations and Sonic Colors, were uh, Freedom Planet, Sonic Before the Sequel, and Sonic After the Sequel. Yeah. By the way, Jerome, if you're watching this in the future, you were supposed to record Freedom Planet a long time ago. What the fuck happened? <laughs> Life. Yeah, life. <laughs> I, I, I really did enjoy Finn and Planet for what it was. I know my buddy, he really, really didn't like it, but I I really enjoyed it outside of the final boss. I did not... I, I have mixed opinions on the final boss. I like it because it's challenging, but at the same time, it's kind of bullshit. I mean, like, if you get hit once, you're dead, pretty much. Like, I think it's yeah. a two-hit kill, which always bugged the hell out of me. I, I don't think I actually officially beat that game. I, I beat it after, after a lot of trial and error. I think I just gave up because I was like, you know what, I have much better stuff to do with my time than this. So I just said, alright, I beat it, good enough. Well, you're not really missing much. It's a really stock ending, you know. Yeah. Plan world is save, world is save. Yeah, I think I googled the ending. Characters, yeah. Yeah, characters, uh, you know, I'll have, you know, a fun time and party and then that's it. Credits I'm, roll. I'm It'd still waiting cool for all the, if, um, all the other Sega characters. Sega does a stuff. Freedom Planet crossover with Sonic one day. That'd hey, be interesting. It, yeah, that'd actually be kind of cool. I mean, honestly, the character designs fit right in a Sonic game anyway, so... They, they might yeah. be a little over-designed for Sonic characters, but yeah, I think it fit. I well, mean, more so, uh, well, definitely for Freedom Planet 2, uh, for sure, because they, they're a lot more they're a lot more overly designed in Freedom Planet 2 versus 1. I I'll admit, I haven't followed Freedom Planet 2 much at all, because as far as I know, the DLC isn't fully done for Freedom Planet, is it? I didn't even know there was supposed to be DLC. Well, not, not DLC, but the free patches and stuff, like the Dexter oh. characters. Like, the turtle character is supposed to be a character at some point, and I don't think he is yet. Ah. But I th I kind of I kind of see like the freedom like for Freedom Planet one anyway I can totally see the characters like make, even making like a cameo appearance in the Archie com on the in the uh, Archie comics I could see that yeah I, I can see that happening too actually also that's another thing I also wanted to bring up I always wondered why has uh, Sonic Team never made a game about the Archie comics okay but let me but let me be clear post Penders not pre Penders okay so this is not uh, Super Tales whatever the guy's name is. Yeah, not Turbo Tales, no. Yeah, not Turbo Tales. Oh God, I really because don't that was an abomination. That, guy. that that was an abomination. But I've Who I've always that was been. That a good idea. Ken Penders. <laughs> Legs for days. Yeah. 
But like that's I've always been like I've always wondered why they never attempted to do something like that. Like sure they did it in the past with the oldest Sonic game, but I would have liked to see them take do a modern take on like a Archie Sonic game nowadays. I think they I think it has a lot of potential actually. Yeah, it could have been interesting. I, I I'm guessing just because it's technically not like it's their IP, but I'm guessing there's some kind of licensing with Archie that's probably the cause. Possibly. But then again, they're getting but sued I, I could again. Totally, so who knows? Yeah, I, I mean, I could totally see it happening. So. You know, maybe, maybe one day. I don't know. Also, Ramon, are you happy I'm finally using Super Sonic again? Yes. You're breaking the game, and that makes me happy. I mean, so far you're one for two with Super Sonic, so... Yeah. Although it's so it's sad when I have to say that Super Sonic makes the game's physics more bearable. But that's just because... I think that's just by nature because you're going faster by default. <laughs> Oh, so what does Eggman really use these bases for exactly? Um, um to piss Sonic off, probably. Trapping like little animals and robots. But where? Like what? Yeah, is, like, I, like what part like, of this has? Like, yeah, it would have actually been a cool stage gimmick if you could actually see like in the background animals being turned into robots. That would have actually been a neat gimmick. But there's no such th there's no such thing here. So yeah. <laughs> it's it's the same kind of thing as Mega Man not having spiked Wallman yet. Yeah, <laughs> I would love it. I would love it. Is no spiked wall band. I would love if they had added that in as me at Mega Man Nine as like a joke boss. That would have been fantastic. Like a, like, like a stage that you actually can't beat, but they but they totally were aware of the joke and just went with it. No, but the only way to beat it is you gotta stand outside the door and shoot for like five minutes. <laughs> oh, so it's one of those bullshit like archaic bosses where you have to find a roundabout way of actually killing it. Yeah, crouch Kinda underneath like... this one cliff. Underneath this one cliff to get to the waterfall. Yeah, I'm immediately reminded of Castlevania. It's Castlevania 2. Crouch um, near the cliff with a certain item in, ho uh, with, in your hand and wait a few seconds. Because, you know, normal people are going to figure that out. Well, that, that kind of reminds me of like, standing outside and shooting. That reminds me of um, in Ratchet and Clank Future... Uh, a Crack in Time was the game. In, in that Ratchet and Clank game, the final boss is like really... It's actually a really good final boss. I, I enjoy it. But... Um, you can just stand outside the door to the boss and just snipe him and take down half his health before he resets the next pattern. And it's just like, it's like, oh man, like, I didn't want to cheese this boss, but now that I know I can, I have to. <laughs> uh, yeah, you have to. Speaking of In which, fact, right, um, you guys have played, uh, another Metroid 2 remake, right? Uh, I haven't, I haven't finished it. I haven't finished it, but I have played it. Alright, it's just slight spoilers, but they will make adventures in this game, right? They're kind of, they're very difficult, but I found a really cheap strategy to beat them. So, whenever you go into the boss room, right, you always go in through a morph ball, uh, like, part in the, the hole in the wall. So what you can do is, you can stay in that morph ball uh, hole, and then the boss will reset his pattern. You go down, you get like a couple hits in, then go back into that hole. And he just resets. And I think that actually reset. happened in the original Metroid too. Like now that you mention that, I, I remember I, actually. Yeah, sort I of. think that I actually think that does happen. I don't remember. I never played Metroid too much, I, so I know I they changed the Queen bit. Metroid. I, from what I understand, my, my one Metroid buddy was telling me that they changed the Queen Metroid's pattern quite a bit, but I haven't I haven't played through it yet. Yeah, the Queen Metroid's a lot different, but the Mega Metroids are just a pain to deal with. But hey, also, I mean, uh, they patch while it we're out. speaking of. While we're speaking of cheesing the bosses, uh, I'm also immediately reminded of Yoshi's Island 2, where uh, it was the one, I think it was a uh, naval piranha, uh, where if you if you actually manage to inch your way close to the boss without actually going into the boss room and triggering the cutscene, then you can actually use your egg, uh, get a free hit on it, and it'll insta-kill the boss. I was, but, like, amazed when I found that out as a child, because I never knew you could do that. That doesn't surprise me. That also me. reminds me of, like, this one boss in Deus Ex Human Revolution. Well, there's a there's multiple bosses in Deus Ex that are kind of like this, but this one box in Human Revolution, right? He's a really tough boss on his own because it's a really long gunfight. But if you there's, there was a glitch before where pretty much you when he's jumping over like a ledge when he's vaulting over something, you could punch him and he's insta killed. Wait, so when he's vaulting over a ledge, you just punch him and he just instantly dies? Yeah, because normally, right, you can you can't do a punch animation like while they're like while while they're on the ground or anything because they'll just punch you back while in the middle of the punch animation and you'll lose health. But there was a glitch right where you could actually do a regular punch animation that'll instant knock him out and kill him. Oh wow! So yeah, that was, well, they, they, they thankfully patched that. But it, it's really weird because like. In the previous JSX games, you could pretty much kill a boss before he actually gets on screen, 
or turns into a boss. You can just, like, while he's entering the room, right, you can just place a mine and then he'll die. That, that reminds me, while, while we're talking about cheesing, there was this one, uh, again, another Ratchet and Clank game. Uh, another cheesing that I actually figured out myself that I checked with um, people on the Ratchet, like the Insomniac official forums, and from my understanding, no one has ever seen this this glitch before. Not, not this glitch, but this cheesing that I figured out, which is really cool. There's this one planet, I, I don't think either of you guys have played Ratchet and Clank, have you? Oh, no. I won't, the only Ratchet and Clank I ever played was Up Your Arsenal, and okay. I did play Crack in Time, but that was... I don't remember much because before I actually got a chance to even really get into the game, my brother sold the PS3 that we had. Oh, okay. So. Yeah, in, in the first game, it's it's a really in, it's hard to explain, but there's this one level where uh, you have to get to the end, like the, the end of the level is in sight, but there's like this little gate, and you have to hit the button on the gate on the other side of the gate to open it up. Uh, but the gate's not blocked by like anything like physical; it's blocked by like four lasers or whatever horizontally going across like the gate. And uh, I figured out there's this one gun called the Visibomb where you can just straight up uh, shoot a guided missile. And if you shoot the guided missile at the right angle, there's a, there's a stack of boxes behind it so you can aim it right. You can actually hit with the explosion frames the switch. You can skip the whole level, and it's one of the hardest levels in the game. Oh, wow. Uh, so I, I was like, wow, that's... It was shot in the dark, but it worked. And then uh, I mentioned it, like I said, I don't... As far as people could tell, I was the first person to think of it. I think I showed it in my review. Um, that that that's gonna, if people when people uh, when that becomes more of a widespread trick, that's gonna really help speedruns. Well, speedruns are yeah. speedruns are. I think they skip that planet entirely somehow. So I don't think so. Oh, okay. Well, maybe not. But or maybe um, for hundred percent speedruns. Yeah, for hundred percent speedruns, I'm I'm sure because I know in um, the to get to the end of the level. Or to get to the next level's end, you have to get this thing called the Hollow Guys. It's just a thing that turns you into a different type of. It turns you into a robot, pretty much, like visually, and that's how you break into like this robot, in like base or whatever. And um, I guess somebody found a way to cheese through where they could skip the entire stealth section where you needed that item and get to the end. I don't know how, but I'm pretty sure it involved a lot of clipping. That that ga those games are held together by glue and spit. I swear to you. Like, it's nuts. I, there's there's another um, commentary channel, actually. They do commentaries of uh, Ratchet & Clank games. It's two guys who used to work on Ratchet & Clank games. And they talk about, like, all this stuff that, like, how the PS3 ports of the games are really, really buggy. And they talk about how, like, why that happened. Because, apparently, when you make PS3 ports of PS2 games, Sony doesn't let you make changes. So you just have to port the code as it is. Oh, that's, and, that's an odd thing and, to not let developers do. Yeah, yeah and in, in, in Up Your Arsenal, um, I don't know how... Did you beat Up Your Arsenal? Uh, no, I never beat it. I, okay. I got close, but I never went to, all the way to the end. 